Now, stargazers will have their eyes on the skies above the U.S. state of Utah this weekend when a very special capsule is due to come back to Earth from space. I'm, I'm fascinated by I this. I can't wait to hear about this. So, it's a capsule which contains rocks and dust, and it, the rocks and dust are from an asteroid. And so, it took four years to reach that asteroid, and then it did a little quick land grab, didn't it? Of the stuff. Of, of stuff. Yeah. About 250 grams worth of stuff. Is that and all? yeah, it's small. And loads of scientists are waiting for this to come back to Earth. And the idea is that there could be vital clues about the formation of our planet more than four billion years ago from the dust and rocks that have been gathered. Just from that little bit, you can find out so much. Uh, with the details, here's our science editor, Rebecca Moran. Asteroid Bennu, a 500 metre wide rock hurtling through space. With its boulder-strewn terrain, it tops NASA's list of space rocks that pose a danger to our planet. But it could also shed light on our very beginnings. So NASA decided to get up close and personal with it. After a two-year journey, captured on camera, this was the moment the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft collected a sample in a smash and grab that lasted just five seconds. These bits of Bennu were safely stowed in a capsule, and now they're heading back to Earth. We're looking at material that existed before our planet did, before the origin of life. In fact, some of it may have been from even before the solar system formed. So we're looking at the beginning of our story. How did our solar system form? How did asteroids come together? And did asteroids like Bennu literally make the Earth a habitable world? For the landing site, they've chosen a vast wilderness. After travelling for billions of miles through space, the capsule is going to land somewhere over here in the Utah desert. Scientists think there's about 250 grams of rock and dust inside. It doesn't sound like much, just a handful of so, but every single grain of this is precious, and scientists will study it to reveal the story of our solar system. The return won't be easy. The capsule will speed through the Earth's atmosphere at more than 27,000 miles per hour, experiencing temperatures of 3,000 degrees, before descending down to the ground, slowed by parachutes. The NASA team has been practicing in the desert, working out the best way to recover the craft after it comes down. The most important thing is to keep the extraterrestrial material inside free from contamination. Of course, we study meteorites here on Earth, and there's a lot we can learn from those meteorites, but they have gone through Earth's atmosphere and potentially had some contamination from Earth. So that's why we need a pristine sample from an asteroid. Bennu's already thrown up some surprises. It's not a solid rock, it's a loosely held together pile of rubble. And some surprising people have also been involved in the mission along the way. So Brian May helped the team to choose the best place to take a sample by making stereoscopic 3D images of Bennu. I think originally 30 different sites were selected as possibilities, but some were rejected because the boulders were too big, some rejected because it was actually too small to navigate into, some because the materials you were going to get weren't going to be nice enough, interesting enough. <laughs> and um, and the, the material that we were able to supply I think just enabled them to tip the balance to actually make those final decisions. All eyes are now on this patch of Utah desert, ready for the landing. The hope is this mission could answer that most profound question. Where did we come from? Rebecca Morrell, BBC News, Utah.